Hello. Say it again. I will just die. Oh yeah, no, his is on, his is on. Ah, he's on. Okay. This is why I know, right? What? <laughs> my friend, my friend died here. What? My friend died here. In this at in, in this town, not this. Oh, know. okay, really. On the water, he went jet ski, and the jet ski came back. He did. Really. So what do you mean though? Tell me a bit more. Now I have to know the whole, not the whole thing, but the general. Okay, so I took a break from music in 2016 because I had a song out with this artist here called Castro. Castro, okay. So Castro is a, he was the biggest singer at the time in the country. So he had a, he had a single out called Seho featuring me. And then I had a single out featuring him called okay. Person to Person. And Seho was number one and Person to Person was number two mm -hmm. on the charts in Ghana at the time. So we both traveled and we're about to go on tour. So he was headed to a funeral outside our car in a place yeah. called Kumasi. Okay, Kumasi. yeah, I know Kumasi. Yeah, and I was home and the next day I just started hearing news that he had died and I died. And I was like, that he's telling that guy, he's a fucking cool Right, man. you're just talking to him. Like... Yeah. So apparently on his way, mm -hmm. the captain of our national football team, yeah. it's called Asamwajan, it's his friend as well. He was here on holiday in another resort and said, yo, come over real quick before you go to the funeral. And he came and he went jet skiing. And a fan saw him jet skiing and said, oh, can I can I join you? you like, can I ride behind your female? But she didn't wear a jacket. And she jumped behind him and he sped off and never came back. Oh no. They That's just saw the jet ski on the water. And, wow. Eh? And the song was number one at the time. Wow. He, he was on my song, which was number two. And he was on two other songs, which were in the top 10. At the same time, when that happened, he had four songs. Four songs. Top ten. Wow, and just like that. Number one, number two, number six, number nine. Wow. That's six and years ago. And how old was he at that time? He was about 30, 34, 35. Okay, so he's young. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. I guess you got to give God thanks for every day he gets to be yeah. alive, eh? Because you honestly, who would have thought? Yep. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a sad story. But did you record it? Yes, I did. Okay, I knew you would. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. So it was about five years ago. Yeah, six, so it was 2016. 16, right? Yeah. So is that the reason you took the break? So I had planned everything around. The thing is, I couldn't perform. We never performed any other songs. They were all like new records. But you were anticipating too. Yeah, so we had we have a book for like a bunch of shows. And I just felt very funny performing the songs without them. So then I took a break from the music at that point. Mm -hmm. And then I started investing in like other things. Like that's when I started building my club and my event company right. and stuff like that. So did you do those things to kind of stay busy? You just yeah. didn't want to be doing nothing? Yeah, I like I have a bunch of different interests. It's not just the music. Yeah, so, I know. Yeah, so I decided to explore those. At that point when I couldn't, I wouldn't say I couldn't, I didn't want to perform the music. Right. Because of what had happened, I started exploring the other things that I had interest mm. in. Did a lot of people know that that was the nah, reason no for one, your break? No, nobody knew. Oh. Till later on. I spoke about it maybe like three years or four years after. So what were people, do you know what people were saying or assuming of, about you while you were gone? Uh, I think everybody has different, different assumptions. Mm hmm you know, I mean, you can't be hot for forever, you know. Right, right, music right. Scene. Yeah. So, I mean, but like after a year, I didn't like totally stop putting music out. I just didn't put out like a full body of work. Right. I think like a year and a half later, I put out one more, another song. And then a year after, I put out like two songs. Like yeah. I just, I kept putting one or two songs out right. every year, even though I was busy with, right. the, with the other stuff. Yeah. I would still like put a song out, like I put something out with Kwame Eugene, I put something out with Kitty, I put something out with Medical, I put something out. I put out about five, four songs. It was still your passion, but you just Yeah, so doing now, it. so like last year was when I decided to start working on a full body of work. Okay. So I started my media tour, I went to, I started in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Got a plan with South Africa, the US, Europe, then Ghana, then put the album up. Okay. So I did, I did South Africa, I was very successful in February. So then in March, I started in the U.S. So I started in D.C. We did the first event, and then I went to Miami. I had two events in Miami. So I did the first one. Yeah. So before, that was on a Wednesday night. 
So the second one was on a Saturday night. Yeah. On Thursday, everything got shut down because of Corona. Oh, really? Yeah. So Dang. then I, I was like, okay, so Miami shut down, but LA wasn't shut down. And my right. next event was in LA. So I flew out with the team. I was with Nina. Yeah. Nina was recording. We were recording at UP at the time. Yeah. So we flew to LA to, to do that event because that event was scheduled for, I think, a Monday. So we flew out on Friday or Saturday. Yeah. And then when we landed the next day, LA got shut down. Seriously. And I was like, okay, so New York is in shutdown. Before I could get to New York, New York got shut down. Then the whole country got shut down. Wow. And I was stuck there till till August. Oh, you were stuck. Yeah, I was stuck in this, like all the borders. The borders was closed oh. from March till July. Yeah. Yes, I remember. So, yes, yeah. Ghana's borders were closed. And the U.S. borders were closed okay, as well, yeah. so you couldn't leave, you couldn't come in. So what were you doing for all that time? I was recording and. Just, right just working. Music. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, I couldn't record in the beginning because like there was mm -hmm. couldn't go to nobody's studio at the time. So I was I was writing more. So I I go back to Ghana at the end of July. Right. And I was quarantined for two weeks. Mm -hmm. I got out in August, and then we're allowed to open like certain hospitality establishments. Yeah. So I couldn't open my club, but I opened my lounge. Yeah. And that took up a lot of my time. Okay. But I was still writing. And I started recording again. I couldn't put the album out like I like I planned to right. because of what had happened. So I kept writing, and then in uh, in November, I started recording again. Mm -hmm. I decided to make it an EP. Okay. And then Ronnie turned me up, and Kill Beats, and all these producers started working on this project. Nice. And now there's like 16 songs, so it can't be an EP anymore. Oh no! All <laughs> right. And tonight it's about to be 18 songs. Yeah. And then so it's going to be an album instead of okay. an EP now. So that's good. Then so I'm all the songs prepare. you've written are going to be on this album. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Not all of them. I'll pick the best one, like the best 15 or 15. 14. Can you, you think you can narrow it down to so? Hopefully. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you know when you Hopefully. like you like your songs, it's like how do you choose which ones? It'll be difficult cut? because I have I have songs. I'm even trying to do like a. That's a part of the album. I have songs with certain legends. Mm -hmm. That I never put out or I never promoted that I want to put on the album too as bonus tracks. But I don't know whether to put them as bonus tracks or as main tracks. Mm -hmm. I have a song with Fali Cooper from Congo that we did like four years ago that I never put out. There's a big, that's a legendary high life artist here called Oforian Pontatu that I have a song with that I want to put on the album that I did four years ago too. Oh, wow. So do you ever feel like you're torn between waiting another year, another year, another year yeah, to I'm not put gonna these wait. songs out? I'm going to put these songs out this year. All of yeah. Them. Just get them uh, out. I mean, we brought the studio set up even on holiday. I know, I can yeah, see. And, and I'm recording every every other night. So yeah. It definitely, I'm, I'm going to put this album out this year. So what's, what is this album going to feature? Is it going to be mostly hip hop? Afro beats, mix of both. I think it's a blend of like four different genres. Wow. So there's Afro beats, there's mm -hmm. hip hop, there's house. Right. And there's high life. Okay. So it's a mix of a lot of different sounds and there's a lot of features. I, I'm probably on like only four songs by myself. Okay, wow. Yeah. That's going to be a really fun album, actually. Very yeah. fun. Yeah. So do you ever feel like you need to choose a genre for an album? No. So, no. You know? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, a, I'm a rapper, but my favorite genre of music is hip, high life. High life? Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. But I can't sing. But that's my favorite <laughs> genre of music. I love yeah. high life music. I love house music. I listen to 90s R&B music more than I listen to hip hop music. I love 90s R&B. Yeah. Yeah. This album is like a comp, and this is like, this is my fifth album, and I've been, this is my 10th year. Yeah. And this is my fifth album. You also have a record label. Yeah. So how's that going? Okay, so... Um, there's a, there's a, there's a female artist that's been signed to the label for two years. She's called Sefa. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. Last year, she had one of the biggest songs in the country, raked up millions of streams. Wow. And she put her album out, her first album out last year, yeah. just before Christmas. It's called Growth. Go check it out. She has two big singles out now. All right, cool. Um, Player featuring Wendy Shea. And the second single is called Wanty Wanty. That's her by herself. She's called Sefa. Go check her out. Uh, Nina and I, Nina Richie, she's a rapper based in Canada. Yeah. She and I put out a joint uh, EP as well, seven mm -hmm. songs, two months ago. Just go, go go check that out too. Okay, There's two cool. videos off that out, and she's working on her solo album now, and I'm I'm working on my solo album now. 
Okay, so are you also working on music videos for the songs yeah. on this album? Yeah, about seven videos. Seven? Yeah, and then Ronnie turned me up, who is one of the main producers of the label, and DJ Breezy are both working on their respective albums as well. Okay, wow, so yeah. that's, they're going to be yeah. busy. Yeah, busy year. Okay, so when is this album going to be done, ready to release? I put, the, I put the album out in May. May. It was scheduled for last month as an EP. But then I, I changed the and date. And you added songs. I added songs to it and I okay. pushed it to me. How many artists are assigned to you right now? Okay, so currently it's three, there's three artists. Three main artists. Three main artists. Uh, that's a new girl that we're working with too. Mm -hmm. She's here with us, but her music isn't out yet, so I don't want to spo okay, spoil yeah, it now. Yeah, but yeah, she's yeah. here with us, she's recording. Yeah. So there'll probably be about four by the time this airs. Right. Yeah. Or five. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'm an artist myself. I'm oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> I'll let you listen to my song after, but okay. um, you might want to sign me. Okay. I'm just saying. All right. Okay. It's possible. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I guess let's rewind a little bit. Okay. And give me like a synopsis of your journey and how you started. Also, I want to note that you're very young. For all the accomplishments that you've made Very we're the cool. same age and you've done like twice wow. as much as i have <laughs> I'm, I'm embarrassed no, no, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a workaholic workaholic mm -hmm. yeah so tell me about you know a little bit about your journey okay so um i grew up with my mother my parents split when i was about six or seven mm -hmm. so i grew up mainly with my mom and i wasn't introduced to music till Early in my teenage years, maybe like when I was about fourteen or fifteen, my mother was an academic, so she she was she didn't even play music. Yeah, she wasn't even playing music at home. Mm. So some of my half brothers, who live outside the country, started coming into town and, and were giving me like mixtapes, Jay Z mixtapes, and Nas mixtapes, and Busta Rhymes albums, and all that type of stuff. And I was in high school then. So I learned all these songs. So that's how you got into music. Yeah, I learned all these songs. They were sneaking you CDs. Yeah, they weren't sneaking me <laughs> CDs, but when I would leave my mother's house to go stay at my dad's, they'll mm -hmm. be there, mm. and it was playing. They were playing music, every, and I'm like, oh. So you were just soaking it yeah, in. Yeah, and I learned almost all these records. And when I went to boarding school, right. Every Saturday night there was something called the the records night. Yeah. Where arts, the the students who know how to rap or sing come perform and stuff. And I didn't have to write any songs. Really? I would just write all these songs that I learned off my brother's mixtapes. Mm. And and there, I was in boarding school. People didn't know these songs. People didn't know who Beanie Siegel was or Nas yeah. or Busta Rhymes. Or, people didn't know any of these people. So I could I could rap all these songs. I could perform all these songs. And they were amazing. And they were like, yo. <laughs> so when I finished, so while I was still in school, mm -hmm. I started recording my own songs. Yeah. So I will sneak off to out of boarding school, come to a car to record music. Sneak. Yeah. And, 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 in my, and, the, and in boarding school, typically here, when you are, when you're caught twice, you get kicked out. The first time you get suspended, I got caught three times. So wow. they, I got kicked out in my final year. Oh, wow. Your so, mom must have been pissed. Yeah, everybody was pissed. <laughs> but I still wrote my finals, went to uni, I was still recording music. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I finished uni that I called my first break. I was recording in a studio really far away from my house. Yeah. And there was another rapper there who was also trying to break into the scene. Mm -hmm. And it was difficult at the time because he was rapping in English, I was rapping in English, and there was nobody, there was no English music on the radio at the time. Yeah. It was unheard of. Everything on the radio was local dialect. So do you feel like people around you kind of doubted? Everybody did. Like, what are you doing? It's kind of yeah. a waste of time. Everybody. Did. And mother. you just... From my mother to my brothers, everybody thought it was bullshit. You just ignore them. Yeah, so I was still doing what I wanted to do. And then, yeah. and then I met this guy who was doing the same thing I was doing. But we just didn't have the money to push it. Right. So if it costs 5,000 CDs at the time to put a project out, yeah, I could probably come up with 2,000. Okay. <laughs> and then he could come up with maybe 2,000. Right, yeah. And then we had to go talk to our friends to help us with another thousand. Another thousand. thousand. So we're like, okay, so I, I can't find 3,000. Right. Uh, I can find two thousand. So you gotta just put your resources 000. together and hustle. So let's put our songs together. Right. You know, I have I have three songs. You have three songs. Yeah. Okay. So pick your best three. I pick my best three. Let's do four songs together and and put it out as a a group project. Yeah. So we did that and we shot these videos 
and I shipped them off to South Africa and Nigeria. Yeah. And gave it to Ghanaian stations and and, and and the Nigerian and South African stations were playing them on heavy rotation. Wow. But it wasn't being played like that here. In Ghana. In Ghana. So by the time we went for this big award show called the Channel Awards, that brought like all of Africa together. We were nominated as Best West African Artists. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, we didn't win. Yeah. I think Whiskey won that one. Oh no, Debange won that one. Mm -hmm. So when we came back to Ghana, I was like, oh, there was only two people nominated from Ghana. The biggest artist in the country at the time right. was Porter Chama Kwame. And these two English rapping dudes. Who are these English, English rapping, rapping dudes? So then Ghana started paying attention yeah. to us. And, and then the guy was in a group of at the time decided we, sh we, we should um, work on solo projects. Okay. So when he decided that, I, was, I, I said, cool. Right. But then we got nominated for the Ghana Music Awards as well in Ghana now. Oh, okay. So I, now Ghana's noticing. So Ghana was paying attention and yeah. then we won. Oh, wow. And that was the first time we ever won anything. Now we couldn't decide who to take the award home because now we're in a group no more. Oh. <laughs> so the video director took the award home. Yeah. Um, long story short, I put my album out the next year. He, he didn't put his album out. Okay. So I, I put mine out the next year. And then that's where everything went crazy for me. Wow. Right? I got nominated Best African Artist BT Awards. So I went to LA. Amazing. So uh, how old are you around that time, around the BT I was, Awards? I was 20, 24. Okay, so you're young, just, just hustling on your own and just putting yeah. your music out. Yeah, 2011. So I went, came back, and every single award show in the country or in Africa had me on there. So I, I win some, I lose some. Right. But... Now, all the music I was putting out was hip-hop music. English. English rap music. Mm -hmm. So, I still wasn't as mainstream as I wanted to be. Right. Like, you would compare me to somebody who was, who was mainstream, easily. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you put me on the same shows, I'll get the same figures. All I needed to do was have one commercial song mm -hmm. that would go outside the borders of Accra and Kumasi. That could touch like the other regions, and right. which meant I had to either dumb it down or, or, or do music in the local dialect. Mm -hmm. The type of music I listened to was not the type of music that I was putting out. Right, yeah, know? yeah. But in order to survive and put food on the table, yeah, you gotta adapt. I had to adapt. So yeah, there was a song that I did called Vera in two, 2013. Mm -hmm. So that became my first number one song. Big song. I was on my second album. Then I had a second one that I dumbed down as well. Featured a really, a really talented artist called El mm -hmm. on the hook he sang in Ga. Okay. Oh, that went crazy. Then, I, I, she, so I, yeah, you were really I, breaking into the Ghanaian yeah. like I performed industry. every weekend for about a year and a half. Yeah. Like whoa. straight every weekend. For, every weekend. Yeah. So do you feel like maybe if you were in the states, that mm -hmm. the type of music that you were initially putting out would have caught on for you? Being outside of Ghana, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I really don't. I really, I really can't tell. Right. So did you ever have that desire, even to nah, go to the states and I never did and work for a year or two? Uh uh never. Really? I, yeah. I've probably been to the states like a hundred times. I've never stayed longer than I did during Corona. So, why? I mean, a lot of people. It's like the holy grail is. Yeah. Getting to America, for you me, know what I'm it's, saying? For me, it's not getting to America. It's mm. getting the music to the rest of the world, including America. Mm -hmm. It's the music. I love yeah. that. Yeah, it's getting the music to Europe, getting the music to America. Not me going to live in America right. and trying to build a career there. I have too much control of what I do over here to want to live in America. Yeah, that's amazing. Even, that's, even that's if great. I had to live somewhere else, it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't be America. Yeah. America would probably get yeah, top five, but... It's not like a, yeah. it's not a thing for me. Yeah, yeah. me neither. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> so is there any other endeavors that you want to get into? Aside from what you already have going on, you got the, the club, mm -hmm. record label, your own personal music. Is there anything else oh, that I, you want to add? I, I do a lot of other stuff. <laughs> I have an events company. It's called Livewire Events. Okay. So I, 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 uh, we've done a lot. So is that new? And that was about six years old. Okay. So I did Stone Boy's concert. Okay, so you're no, let me not, not, let me not say I. 
so the, my company produced Stone Boys concert. Okay, cool. We produced the biggest boxing event in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, that was Bukum Banku versus Aita Powers. So wow. what I did was put boxing and music together. So we did like a, we put the biggest boxers in the country together and yeah. had a concert on the same stage. Yeah. So we had Shatawale and Stone and Sakwadia and Ifia. And then perform. If you sang the national anthem, wow. and Sakwadi opened the show, shut the rally closed. It was, it was pretty That's dope. Big. And then uh, we have like a lot of uh, resort getaway events here. We, the last event we did was here. It was called Island Rave. It was a three day party here. All the rooms sold out. There's part, there was Sick. a party on the island, there was a pool party, there was a party at the club for three days here. Yeah, a lot of stuff for the event company. Well, that's and amazing. Then, um, in May, uh, we're opening a radio station. Oh. Yeah, it's called Enjoyment Radio. Wicked. Yeah, so it's a, it's a radio station dedicated to Ghana music. Okay. And so it's going to be every day? A, a, yeah, every day. An every day. Yeah, every day. It's an online radio station. It'll probably grow into something bigger, but we're, st we're launching in May. Okay, well. cool. And wow, and so is there anything you don't things. do? Come on, like... <laughs> I do I do stuff that tie in with each other so entertainment entertainment stuff so the event company produce an event the artist on the label will perform an event the after party will be at the club the launch will be at the lounge the music will be promoted on a radio station you know? so yeah. they're all like kind of tied in to each right other. so what would you say to the youth of today people trying to get into the music industry whether it be in the Afrobeats, hip hop, Ghana, um, all over Africa. I have a thing I've always said. Um, I think the reasons for me being able to to successfully accomplish all these dreams that I, I had when I was young was through prayer, hard work, dedication. So I always say, get your PhD. PhD. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I'm stealing that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pray hard with dedication because wow. I, I was very relentless. Relentless. Yeah, when it came to your ma goals, making my music and my goals, and and that's the, that's the hard work part. It is. And I was very relentless. Yeah. I went through like great lengths to be able to make these things happen, and I was dedicated to it. Nothing could change my mind. Like, wow. Yeah, and and my best friend is, was always been God. Uh -huh. and I've never had like another. A best friend that's close. Like, that's who I talk to every right. day. So that's bestie for me. Imagine. So it's prayer, hard work, dedication for yeah. me. Yeah. And, I, I, mean, and I feel like, yeah, combine all of that and just being yourself and believing in yourself. Yeah. Is enough to get you to point A and then point B and then finally yeah. get to where you, you, you want to go to. I know. I think that a lot of people are looking for validation. Validation online, validation friends, family. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Imagine, and you, as as you said, being the only or one of the only English um, hip hop artists in Ghana, yeah. you didn't have all that validation. There yeah. wasn't a whole bunch of people proving mm -hmm. that it could be done. So, if your parents asked you, um, so who's your who's your role model? Who do you want to be like? Yeah. At that time, there was nobody to 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 even say, to "Look say, at ah, this guy. He at, was successful." Off doing what I'm trying to do. There was no one. You were the first. Yeah, so my mother really just Even thought it was, was, was just totally rubbish. What, what, what are you doing? English yeah. in Ghana. That's, <laughs> that's for the Americans, you know? Yeah. So there was nobody to... And you still yeah. believed in that. Amazing, that's, I really love that. what I wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah, and I just made sure that it took a while, you know? From like 18 to 23, it took me five years. That ain't even a while because you know what? Some people are grinding for longer and they don't even scratch the surface sometimes. Yeah, I mean, so, everybody's different. Right? But yeah, for sure, everyone's journey and path, you know, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. Deep Black, that was an amazing chat with you. Thank you very much. I love the message that you shared with everybody and I hope that when people see this, they'll realize that everything they need is in here mm -hmm. and up there. Up there and here. And in here. Yeah. Okay, D Black. Uh, 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 uh. Thanks so much. All so right. um when your album is out, yep, I'm gonna check let it everybody out. know. May. I'm gonna let you guys know. It's called loyalty. Loyalty. Mm -hmm. Amazing. All right, D Black. Well we're gonna enjoy the rest of the day. We'll be out. What are okay. we doing? Are we going on the uh, jet ski or not? 
I think they put the end of it. Oh, like, shoot, it's close. Like tomorrow, so I'm stuck here in the studio. In the studio. All right, let's record. All right. Let's go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Recording right there. Okay, see ya. That was dope.